Hi, welcome to this Engineering Mechanics video. My name is Terry Brown from the Faculty of Engineering and IT at UTS. Now, uh, in this video, I'm actually recording this in my work office rather than at home, so there might be a little bit more background noise than usual. So apologies for that. So let's get into the examples that we have here. So the first problem that we're going to look at is that we have a car being towed at a constant speed by this 600 Newton force. And we're given an angle here, theta is 25 degrees. So if we go and look at our diagram here, uh, this angle here is given as 30. And then over on the left, this uh, angle between the rope AB and this horizontal line here is 25 degrees. So uh, we're asked to determine the forces in each of the ropes AB and AC. So uh, first, let's consider what our plan might be for this problem. So as with nearly all engineering mechanics problem, the first thing that you need to do is to draw a free body diagram. So FBD, free body diagram, and you need to consider what you're going to draw the free body diagram of. So in this case, we're going to draw a free body diagram for this link or point A, okay? Because that's where our known force is acting and our two unknowns are acting on that particle. Then we're going to apply the equations of equilibrium to solve for the unknown forces in each of the ropes. Okay, so that's our plan. Uh, and we can use the equations of equilibrium because uh, even though this thing is moving, it is in equilibrium because we're told that it's moving at a constant speed. Okay, so our free body diagram will look something like this. So we identify particle A, we put on the force that we know, so 600 newtons is the force that we know, and our forces in our cables or our ropes those forces will be acting along the line of the ropes so we put in here the force arrow indicating that and we also label our unknown forces so here we have force in rope AB so we'll call that force subscript AB and we'll put in here our 25 degrees that we were given in the information here we have our force in the other rope AC, so we've called that force subscript AC. Applying the, the scalar equations of equilibrium at A, we get, uh, so we write out that first, so sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and we've indicated that to the right is positive. So now we need to look at each of these forces in turn and work out their components in the x direction and just simply add them up. So we have FAC, so its horizontal component will be here. So if I get pen here, All right, so horizontal component along in that direction there. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, so FAC, that's the adjacent side of this triangle, so that will be FAC cos 30. Then we have the other force, so its component and I should have drawn the other one in dashed lines just to distinguish between the component and the force itself. Okay, so that horizontal component or component in the x direction will be FAB. Again, we've got adjacent side of this right angle triangle. So that will be FAB cos 25. And they're the only components of force in the x direction. So that's all equal to zero. Okay, so do the same thing for some of the forces in the y direction. Again, sum of forces, y direction, in the vertical direction, positive. So we start, we look at our free body diagram and we use that to work out our equation of equilibrium. So here I've started with force FAC again. So we want this vertical component. So the vertical component of FAC will be acting down here like this. Right, there's our component FAC and this component here is the length of this triangle, right angle triangle. So that's the opposite side. So that will be FAC sine 30. Over here we have FAB. Its Y component will be down here as well. Like that. So its magnitude will be FAB sine 25 again because right, we want to know the length of this side of that right angle triangle. And then we have 600 newtons 
acting up in the vertical direction as our known force. All of that is equal to zero from our equilibrium equation. Okay, so now we've got two equations, two unknowns. So FAC here in the first equation, FAB and FAB in the second equation. Okay, so simultaneous equations. Uh, I'm not going to go through solving that. You should know that from maths. So um, you can do that for yourself and then check that you get the same answers that I've got here for force FAB and FAC. Okay, so having done that, we should think about and check our answers. Okay, so let's have a think. So what have we got here? FAB is 634, FAC is 664. So are they around about right? Um, let's have a look. So one way we can check is that FAB and FAC are at similar angles, so 25 and 30. Um, so if we think about some of the forces in the horizontal direction, uh, these components here must be about the same, or must be the same, uh, the, hor the two horizontal components. So therefore, uh, the magnitude of these two forces that are at similar angles must be similar. Okay, so we look at that, yep, they're not very different. Okay, so that's an indication that we've got, or haven't made a bad mistake. Okay, um, if we look at FAC, slightly greater angle to vertical than FAB, uh, therefore the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction should be zero, so FAC should be slightly greater in magnitude than FAB. So let's have a look. Yep, 664 and 634, so yes, FAC is slightly greater. Right, what else can we do to check? We can reapply the equations of equilibrium. So if we put in our answers back into the equations, um, we can see that we've done our simultaneous equations correctly if this comes out to be equal to zero. So we've got a bit of a non-zero, basically due to our round off error. Okay, same again by reapplying in the Y equation of equilibrium. Also, we can use an alternative solution to solve the problem. So if we do the same problem again, but this time, instead of using the scalar um, components method, we'll use the vector triangle method because we only got three forces. Our justification here is some of the vector forces is equal zero. So what we can do then is to say, all right, we've got 600 here plus our unknown force FAC acting along this line of action. Okay, so we know its line of action is 30 degrees below the horizontal. So we put that in and then we know that all of these three forces must add up to zero. So it must make a closed triangle. So if we take our force FAB, that's going to act along here and the tip of FAB is going to hit the tail of our given force 600 newtons. So we have 600 plus FAC plus FAB should make a closed triangle if we have some of the forces equal zero. So once we've done that, we can put our forces on our triangle and now we can just do some trigonometry to work out our unknowns. So we've got some angles, we've got a known side, we've got two unknown sides. Okay, so I've just redrawn that um, and just done a bit of trigonometry and worked out the internal angles of the triangle. Then I'm going to use the sine rule, A over sine A equals B over sine B, etc. And also the cosine rule, we probably won't actually need that for this problem. So using the sine rule, we can say that F o, sorry, FAC over sine 65, so here's our unknown force or unknown length for the force FAC, the opposite angle is 65. So FAC over sine 65 is equal to our known force, 600 newtons over its opposite angle uh, and its sine, so 600 over sine 55. So simply rearranging this enables us to find FAC directly. And we can see that we've got the same answer that we had before. Do the same thing for FAB. Right, its opposite angle this time is 60 degrees. So um, FAB over sine 60 equals 600 over sine 55. Do the maths and we find FAB equals 634. Right, and they're the same answers that we had before. All right. 
So just a point to note, if you're using this alternative solution, the vector triangle method, where we have a closed triangle, justification for doing that is some of the forces equal zero. Okay, so as a solution to a quiz or assignment problem, you must still draw the free body diagram first, show the equations of equilibrium, which justify your next step, which is drawing the vector triangle. Okay, so when you do this, uh, you must use trigonometry, uh, trigonometry. Don't just draw it to scale and measure. Um, if you want to do that as a check, by all means, but um, it, it, once you get to university, uh, you should be using trigonometry to do these calculations. The next example is uh, this system of cables and weights. So we have SAC A here of 20 newtons with geometry shown. We're asked to find forces in the cables and the weight of SAC B. Now this is what I like to call a football training problem. Okay, it's not likely that you'll ever have to do this sort of a problem exactly in, uh, in practice. You, you're going to know what the weight of the, the load is you're putting on here. Um, you're not going to work it out from angles, but it's good practice and it helps you to apply the, um, the process of solving engineering mechanics problems. So that's why I like to call it football training problem. Okay, so again, first step in our plan is to draw a free body diagram. Now, we need to consider which point we're going to draw the free body diagram of. So this one, it's not so obvious. So we've got choice here, well, two main choices, E and C, for what we draw our free body diagram of. So if we draw a free body diagram of C, then uh, we're going to have three unknowns right at the start. So the force in cable EC, the force in cable CD, and the weight of the sack. So a better choice for drawing your first free body diagram is E, because we have our unknown force here, 20, sorry, our known force 20, and our two unknown forces in our cable. So we'll have two equations we can solve for those two unknowns. And then we can take the force of EC as a known force once we've calculated that, and use that to calculate the weight of the sack at B. Okay, so the free body diagram for link at E, so same as in our first example, remove all of the cables and just replace them with the forces that those cables apply to the, the particle that we're analysing. So in this case, we've got the weight of the sack, the cable tension TEG, and the cable tension TEC. Okay, so applying our equations of equilibrium, some of the forces in the x direction equal zero to the right positive. Note I've also indicated on the diagram which is x and y. So looking at our components here, we have the force TEG. So let me get my pen again. Right, so we're looking at forces in the horizontal direction. So our component here for TEG is this one. Okay, so this time our angle is defined up here. So it's this length here that we need from our right angle triangle. Okay, so that will be sine 30 in this case. Okay, so TEG sine 30 gives us the size of this component. And then TEC, we need this component here. Along there. Okay, so in this case, that component of TEC is adjacent to the angle that we're given. So this time we'll have TEC cos 45. And all of that is equal to zero. So that's our first equation. And note that, very important, that you match the, the unknowns that you write in your equation with what you've shown on your free body diagram. Okay, so these equations come from your free body diagram here. Okay, so TEG on our free body diagram replicated in our equation of equilibrium. T subscript EC on our free body diagram replicated in our equation of equilibrium. Okay, so looking at our forces in the y direction, we have TEG, so we need our component along there like this. So this time it's the cos um, 30 degrees because it's the adjacent to the angle so TEG cos 30 uh, in the positive direction 
then we have TEC its vertical component is here so we need the length right, that side of our triangle so this time it will be sine 45 and it's going in the negative direction so negative TEC sine 45 and we also have our applied load of 20 in the negative y direction okay so two equations two unknowns again solve the simultaneous equations for the two unknowns and this is what you should get okay so now we can move on to the free body diagram of particle C or link C so now we've got our force that we calculated previously 38.6 for cable um, EC put that in as a known force and we've got two other unknowns now the weight and TCD so we now go through the same process that we just went through okay just noting here cable EC exerts force on the link EC equal and opposite to the force acting on link E that we found previously okay so the scalar equations of equilibrium look like this okay so some of the forces in the X direction uh, so we started with this one here so we need that horizontal component there so 38.6 cos 45 minus the horizontal component of TCD so here I've used the 345 uh, triangle ratio okay so if this is if you're unsure about this you can calculate the angle here and just use sine and cos um, but because we're given this ratio we know that the the length of this component here will be four fifths the length of this um, force here TCD okay so that's just what I've done there they're the only two horizontal components so all of that is equal to zero then in the y direction we have um, looking at TCD first so we need the length of so there's our component in the y direction for CD so that we need the length of that side so from our 345 triangle we have 3 fifths times TCD will give us the length of this side okay that's in the positive direction plus the vertical component of our 38.6 so its component is in that direction like that so we need the length of that side of our right angle triangle which will be sine so 38.64 sine 45 minus the weight of the sack which is our unknown in this, in, in this case so two unknowns TCD and WB solve simultaneously this one's a bit easier because there's only one unknown here and we get our unknown forces 34.2 for the cable force and 47.8 for the weight okay so that's it you should go back and do some checks with that uh, the video is already nearly 20 minutes so I'm going to stop here um, so I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in class or online bye for now